in the name of God who is and was and is to come. Today's gospel continues where we left off on Easter Day. Mary Magdalene had come to the tomb, found it empty, and ran to tell Peter and John. They came to investigate, found it as she had said, and went home. Mary stayed. The risen Lord appeared and told her to go tell the disciples. She did. We can imagine how seriously they took this report from a woman they never quite approved of. The Lord is risen. Sure, Mary. So now, on the evening of Easter, the disciples are doing what they seem to do best in the past few days, cowering in fear. The risen Lord appears and gives them a send-off. But the next week finds them in the same place again, behind closed doors. Apparently all they've done is to tell Thomas about it, and he isn't buying it. Mr. Skeptic says, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, I put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. It seems strange so soon after Easter that our lessons should focus on fear and doubt. Why not a little more confidence and joy? But fear is the first cousin of awe, and doubt is the handmaid of faith. Fear gets our attention, that's for sure. And doubt, like faith, makes us look at everything we thought we knew and tosses it up for grabs. Doubt, like faith, calls into question every certainty, every surety, every confidence, assumption, expectation. Nothing can escape it. But it also lays bare new possibilities, exposes us to new prospects, new chances, new places to explore. And finally, it's Thomas the Skeptic, Thomas, who doubts so confidently, so ostentatiously, the same Thomas makes the most com complete confession of faith in all the New Testament. My Lord, my God. Sometimes we think from our post-Easter perspective that we should do better than the disciples, know better than the disciples, doubt less, believe more. We know that their relationship with Jesus had to change, to move from the horror of Good Friday to the joy of Easter, from his life and death as they had known it, to his life as it now was. And they themselves had to move from betrayal to commitment, discipleship to apostleship, from learning to teaching, from seeing to doing. And faith and doubt, fear and awe were constant companions in this new way. So we too are always moving from Friday to Sunday, from our relationship with Jesus as it has been to our relationship as it must be. 
And fear and doubt and betrayal are our constant companions in the way. But so and no less our commitment in faith and awe. But the shadows are no less important than their virtues. And Christ in his new life appears precisely in the midst of doubt and fear to give new life. So think about that next time you're assailed by doubts, next time you're paralyzed with fear. That's exactly when you may be ready to see the past transformed and you with it. To see at last and recognize and confess, my Lord and my God, and to get some peace. The risen Lord brings peace to all this. Peace be with you.